Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third day of uh, BiPalma 21, the second world conference on byproducts of palms and their applications. Uh, it's such a pleasure that uh, we're having two uh, uh, renowned uh, keynote speakers today. Actually, we have uh, saved our best uh, to the end. Uh, we're having uh, Professor uh, Hamid Al Musli and Professor Nasser Bil Jassim. Uh, and we're also having uh, three parallel uh, sessions afterwards uh, with, again, diverse topics on utilizing palm bite products. Uh, the first uh, session, uh, the first room A will have uh, topics related to wood and, uh, and uh, energy applications. Room B will continue with the composite applications with more focus on coconut uh, fibers. And room C will continue uh, with the uh, also diverse topics related to paper and pulp as well as textile applications. So without any further ado, I would like to uh, hand it over to the conference chairman, uh, Professor Dr. Mohamed Jaweed. Uh, stage is yours. Okay, uh, Dr. Midani, thank you so much. Uh, and I welcome all of you to the Bay Palma 2021, uh, the third day or last day of the conference. So today we have the two keynote speakers for this session. First one is, as the Midani mentions that, the Prof. Hamid Al-Mosli, and another is the Prof. Nasir Belgam from France. So first I'm going to introduce you to the Prof. Hamid Al-Mosli. The legendary Prof. Uh, he's going to talk about the dead palm byproduct challenge and future opportunities. The legendary professor Dr. Hamid Al Mosli is an emeritus professor at the Faculty of Engineering and Shams University, Egypt. And he is also the co founder and chairman of the International Association for Palm Byproduct by Palma. Dr. Al Mosli is recognized as the founding father of dead palm byproduct research and development and one of the various of the uh, uh, sustainable development of the local community. He received numerous uh, prestigious awards for his work, such as Khalifa International Award for Dead Palm and Agriculture Innovation 2013. Uh, Dr. Al Mosley has been working in projects aiming at developing local community in all villages of Egypt by applying developing projects using their local resources since 1995. Projects include production of Block boards uh, and production of non uh, traditional animal feed from agriculture residue, production of organic fertilizer from pruning product of the dead palm, dome fibers, mango trees, and production of fig charm. I'll mostly contributed in the uh, foundation of several research society and member in several strategic consultancy and scientific committee. So now I invite the Prof. Hamid to give his keynote talk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. The title of my keynote lecture is a biorefinery for each byproduct, an approach to maximize the added value from dead palm mid -ribs. Uh, First of all, I would like to express my indebtedness to Professor Dr. Ola Hussein for her invaluable help of preparing the material of this presentation. Uh, it is not my intention to present to you a final solution, but rather suggest to you a new line or approach of thinking. First of all, what are the dead palm byproducts? There are many, but I chose among them in this presentation, palm drips, palm leaflets, spadic stems, leaf sheaths, kernels, and waste dates. Well, what is the status quo concerning 
the dead palm by products. Like Archimedes discovering the law of floating bodies, most of the researchers cry, I have found it. Being glad about their discoveries, they don't bother themselves to describe what remained from the resource of the extracting their product. Uh, in most cases, the dead palm pipe products are treated as waste. They are either open field burnt or left near to the dead palms and thus become a cause of fire in dead palm gardens and a cause of infestation by palm red weevil or send to landfills, as you know. Well, what is the objective of developing a biorefinery for each dead palm pipe products? First, maximization of the added value from each dead by dead palm by products. Second, generation of sustainable labor opportunities, and hence endogenous development of local communities where dead palms are grown. Third, avoidance of open field burning of dead palm by products, and hence environmental pollution. Fourth, Avoidance of infestation by red weevil worm, threatening dead palm plantations. And avoidance of making pressure on landfills to get rid of dead palm products or establishments of new landfills. Now, what new ethics steps are needed to attain successful biorefineries? for dead palm by products. Researchers should transcend. Researchers should transcend their individualistic mindset and declare their ethical responsibility and scientifically describe what remains from the resource after extracting their product. Also, I would like to say that in selection of their research topic and the conduction of their research, they, as a springboard, should proceed from the principle of zero waste in use of the dead palm midriffs. Now, what about the palm owners? The palm owners should be responsible for delivering their dead palm pie products to the gate of their palm plantations, correctly packaged. For example, as example, midrib in bundles, palm leaflets in bales, spadic stems in bundles, petioles in jumbo, jumbo bags, leaf sheaths, bales, kernels, jumbo bags, waste dates, jumbo bags. Now I would like to present it to you preliminary biorefineries for dead palm byproducts. Palm drips, palm leaflets, spatic stems, leaf sheaths, kernels, waste dates. Uh, concerning the midrib, I would like to differentiate between the high quality and thick midribs and low quality and thin midribs. The high quality and thick midribs may be used for barrels for pens instead of plastic, prayer beads and toys, mashrabeya or arabesque products, high quality square cross section strips, high quality fiber textile fibers for thermal insulation, composite reinforcement, floor covering. Pur lab sacks, ropes, twins, and non wood papers. And finally, oriented strand board. Uh, all the residues could be used either in peat moss composting or in particle board. The next 
slide, two slides will be devoted to high quality square cross section strips and low quality and thin uh, mid ribs. Concerning the high quality cross section strips, they can be used in lumber like products and substitute for imported woods, boards for parquet and flooring, core layer for, for block boards. Of course, the, the rest of the residue can be used either in uh, uh, peat moss, composting, or particle boards. What about the mid ribs of low quality? Firstly, teeth picks, mashabea products, cellulose derivatives for sizing agents for cotton yarn, isolation of hemicellulose, extraction of microfibrillated cellulose to improve paper sheets, cellulose whiskers for the enforcement of nanocomposites. Also, nanofibrillated cellulose and cellulose nanocrystals for reinforcement of nanocomposites. Microbial protein production, bioethanol, furfural, charcoal, particle board, and MDF. In the next slide, I will show you details of charcoal and furfural. Charcoal could be used in steel, cast iron, and cement industries, pharmaceutical industries, soil amendments, and households in cooking and uh, for better, for, for making warm weather. <laughs> the furfural could be used in so many industries, for example, ink, plastics, and anthocytes, adhesives, nematicides, fungicides, fertilizers, flavoring compounds, and fifral alcohol. Now, what about the leaflets? The leaflets could be used for peroxidase enzyme, which could be used for food processing, beverage processing, animal nutrition, textiles, fuels for transport, and energy production. Also, we can extract from leaflets natural wax. A kilogram can be sold for 45 euro. The natural wax is used for cosmetics and pharmaceutical industries. Also, microbial protein, hemicellulose, paper making, cellulose whiskers for enforcement of nanocomposites, substitute for growth of plethora, plethoras fungi, and traditional products, which we'll, be, we'll see in the next slide. Traditional products from uh, leaflets are crina for upholstery, walling, ma mats, baskets, hats, bags, lampshades. And after the end of, la of the life cycle, we have peat moss and composting. Now, what about the static stem? We have three areas of utilization. Firstly, enzyme assisted isolation of microfibrillated cellulose used for packaging, coating, paints, personal care, food, filtration, environmental remediation, art objects conservation. Also, we can extract from static stems microcrystalline cellulose, which can be used in texturizer, anti-caking agents, fat substitutes, emulsifier, extender, bulking agent in food production, vitamin supplements or tablets. And also we have the traditional uses. Street brooms, as the case in Egypt, fibers for tying of midribs and vegetables. Also, it is very prevailing in Egypt. 
What about the cheese fibers? We have extraction of oxidized nanocellulose to obtain a packaging additive for better packing properties. Reinforcement of polymer composites, lactic acid, glucose, removal of lead ions from wastewater, peat moss. We have also traditional uses, purification of water, ropes, and door, door, and door mats. Now, concerning the dead palm kernels. Firstly, we have treatment of diseases. Remedy for skin wrinkles, area and the depth. Lipids used in antibiotics. Protein as a functional ingredient in food systems. Pharmaceutical industries, cosmetic industries, production of nicin for food preservation, animal and poultry feed, feed additive in the diet of juvenile African fish, seed oil production, treatment of waste, wastewater, closing of cracks in petroleum will boring, biochar by pyrolysis to improve soil fertility, use in caffeine-free coffee making and production of activated carbon. Uh, concerning the treatment of diseases, we have treating kidney and bladder disorder, inflammation and infection diseases, anti-inflammatory activity, analgesic for dental pain, good and asthma treatment. Concerning the cosmetic indices, we have photoprotective cream and also a remedy for reducing acne and dry patches, reducing eczema and reducing melanin. Concerning the seed oil production, we have three products cosmetic cream, liquid shampoo, and bar shaving soup. Uh, now we will have details about the treatment of diseases, cosmetic indices, and seed production in the, in, in the next slide. Uh, I'm sorry, the next slide is devoted to dead wastes. We have pigments, sterols, polyphenols, organic acids, citric, malic, oxalic, or lactic acids. Uh, also, we have for pigments uh, several products. For pigments, we have carotenoids, anthocyanin, flavonols, car carotenes, flavo xanthine and leucotin. We have for sterols, cholesterol, campesterol, sigmastrol, uh, uh, cytosterol, and isofucosterol. Uh, we have also uh, baker's yeast. We have replacement of dietary starch in feed. We have biofuels, acetone, butanol, and ethanol. We have dead syrup uh, and dead paste. In the next slide, I'll, I will show the details of dead syrup. Dead syrup can be used either directly or via fermentation. Direct use includes ingredients in some food formations. For example, ice cream, beverage, bakery products, jam and butter. Also, natural coloring and flavoring agents. Replacing sugar in some traditional Indian and Iranian deserts. Improvement of organoleptic properties and the chemical composition in products such as prebiotic chocolate milk and yogurt. 
What about fermentation? Via fermentation, we can have carotenoids, amino acids, polyhydroxylanocanose, biofuel, alcohol, yeast, dead probiotic fermentation products, antibiotics, exopolysaccharides, exopolysacc citric acid, and acid. And acid, acid. In the next slide, we will we will, we will have details of alcohol, yeast, their probiotic fermentation products, exopolysaccharides, and acetic acid. Uh, here, if we extract from uh, from the syrup alcohol, we have different byproducts: carbon dioxide. Fusel oil used as a solvent for liqueurs, resins, yeast cells, or slop or stillage, vinous. We have yeast cells. We have slop or silage. We have organic acids, acetic, citric, oxalic. We have uh, proteins. We have also lipids, which are used for soup and detergents, fats and oils, waxes, uh, phospholipids. Uh, now we have details of the yeast. Yeast can be used for, baker, for bakery or for further uh, uh, utilization forms. Expo polysaccharides can be used in bacterial cellulose, in curdlan, and in xanthan. Dead probiotic fermented products can be used for dairy products. Acetic acids can be used for vinegar or ethanol, which can be transferred to butanol. Finally, I thank you uh, for uh, hearing me and for questions, comments, and suggestions, don't hesitate to contact me via email. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Ahmed. Thank you for giving a very good overview about the byproducts of the dead palm. You know, that's we are lacking in that one. Now the floor is open. We have a few minutes before we can go to the uh, next speaker. Uh, if you have any questions, any things you can ask directly, or you can write into the chat box, then we can we can uh, pass the questions to him. There is until now there is no question. Okay, if there is a uh, Midani, you want to ask some question? Yeah, can can go ahead. Uh. Yes. Uh, so first, uh, I mean, I would like to thank uh, Professor Hamid for this uh, enlightening talk. Uh, I think uh, we need more of such like uh, broader uh, presentations uh, that provides, uh, I mean, perspective for future uh, utilization of those byproducts. Uh, I would like to ask Professor Hamid. Uh, I mean, out of these numerous products, uh, which ones do you think uh, have the most uh, like commercial potential? Uh, which ones uh, do you think that we will soon see in, uh, in commercial products, uh, either in the supermarket shelves or perhaps in <laughs> industrial applications? Well, uh, concerning uh, Egypt, we have applied some of these ideas. For example, lockboard manufacturer, arabesque. We have e projects for each of these applications. Lumber-like products are very important because we import uh, wood for billions of US dollars. <laughs> uh, I think composting, we have also applied different projects for composting. 
Also, I have forgot to mention another very important feed, use of uh, the palm midrib and the whole palm midrib, uh, the whole palm byproducts as a fodder for cattle and for chickens. It have been already applied in Egypt. Uh, we have also to think about the world interest. We have imported products to USA from the palm leaflet. The palm leaflet is a wonderful material. Why? It is very light, very light. And it can be used in so many applications. We have, uh, we have established a company for working on the palm leaflets. And this company is exporting the products uh, worldwide. Uh, maybe I can ask another, a question. another question that the Prof. Amid, uh, okay, before that, Prof. Amid, there is a one question that is it anything ready to commercialize? Once more, please. Uh, any any product or any uh, technology which is ready to commercialize? Of course. The, the first which I am ready to commercialize, leaflet products. Leaflet we have product. a, a good experience in exportation of leaflet products. Uh, also, we have exported furniture items from Palm drips. I forgot to mention this area of utilization. We have made so wonderful uh, furniture pieces from the date yes, palm yes. midrib. Mm -hmm. And some of our guests from abroad, for example, the ambassador of Sweden has uh, had in his office products from the palm midrib. We have several. Uh, clients also concerning the palm rib. Yes. The beauty of the palm rib is fantastic, more beautiful than the, the imported wood. Yes, I agree, Prof. Ahmed. I saw some of the midrib product during my Egypt visit. It's a very rarely a nice product, you know. Uh, Ramzi, you want to ask something? Huh? Yes, I, I have just one question for uh, Professor Ham uh, Hamid. Very, very, very excellent as a presentation, Professor Hamd, as you know. I'm just you showing, uh, like, a, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just showing, like, a quick, uh, like, uh, photos from the, like, palm wood, uh, from the date palm midribs. Uh, I'm sorry it's in Arabic, but uh, it's, I, I think yes, it's, it's okay, no self-descriptive. Uh, uh, mm. So it's showing the process of converting the, like, the front stalk or the midribs into square, square, uh, uh, strips and then to uh, like uh, panels board, yes. uh, uh, like uh, wooden blocks afterwards yeah, these so. are many of the applications that have been made including furniture uh, in, like uh, different types of furnitures even like uh, wall claddings and wall coverings uh, and uh, floor uh, floor panels like uh, laminates uh, so <laughs> I thought it would be nice to show these as well Okay, great. That, uh, May I say a very small comment? <laughs> okay. Yes. A very small comment. Uh, uh, we were very lucky that four of the best designers in Egypt worked with us. They relied on the beauty of palm more mm -hmm. than the beauty of imported woods. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great, Rob, great. Uh, so, uh, if uh, Ramzi, still you want to ask a question? Uh, yes. The last one, okay, okay. as you know, I, I, as you know, Prof. Hamid, that the, the chemical composition of uh, date palm it is varied from country to country, and uh, from year to year it is different. How to to make uh, good at stability product and the district scale? Uh, maybe your commission opens a, a room for research. <laughs> we can make such a research, but we in Egypt rely on the most dominant species, which are two, seaweed, seaweed uh, palms and uh, baladi or uh, 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 what I would say, uh, uh, 
Belady or uh, palms, uh, I mean, cultivated from the kernel. <laughs> we have a, a very big percent of palms of Egypt from this palm species. These are the most dominant <clears throat> palms we worked on in Egypt. But of course, we can extend work to other species of palms. Yes, yes, uh, is there is a lot of opportunity in this sector. And of course, related to the chemical composition, we need, uh, we have some research, but still we need to find that which variety have better comp uh, cellulose content. So accordingly, we can use for the, uh, so I'm not going to delay for this. Um, on behalf of organizing committee, I'm thankful for, uh, uh, to Prof. Hamid for giving versatile information about the dead palm byproduct. So now we are.